Hello Toppers, today we are going to discuss regarding mnemonics for autosomal dominant inheritance disorders and if you want to know the concept how this autosomal dominant pattern is inherited in previous video there is a clear explanation regarding it. So let us dive deep into the topic. First before entering into the mnemonic we have 5 clues to identify the autosomal dominant disorders. First is Mutation in non-enzymatic structural proteins. So basically, in case of proteins, there are two types. One is enzymatic and another one is non-enzymatic. So in case of these non-enzymatic proteins, there are different types. And one among them is structural proteins. So here, if there is any problem or mutation causing problem with the collagen, fibrillin or cytoskeletal proteins of RBC that will be coming under autosomal dominant disorder. Then mutation in case of membrane receptors for example low density lipoprotein receptor and few uncommon forms of muscle dystrophy and the conditions prefixed with hereditary or familial and finally diseases due to diminished feedback inhibition by end product due to enzyme deficiencies most commonly porphyria. So let us see. So first comes non-enzymatic structural protein disorders. So basically what are all the non-enzymatic structural proteins? They were collagen, Fibrillin and cytoskeletal protein of RBC. So first comes the Marfan syndrome where fibrillin gene will be affected. Then comes achondroplasia where fibroblast growth factor would be affected. Then comes Egler-Danlos syndrome. In case of Egler-Danlos type 6 belongs to autosomal recessive condition and this Egler-Danlos syndrome is basically the problem with collagen. Then comes hereditary spirocytosis where there is problem in the cytoskeletal proteins of RBC mainly spectrin and ankyrin. Then comes neurofibromatosis 1 and 2 and tuberous sclerosis both were neurocutaneous disorders. So next comes membrane receptor issue. Already we have discussed regarding the low density lipoprotein receptor. So that is leading to this hypercholesterolemia. So either you can remember this as a membrane receptor defect or you can remember it that the disease is starting with the familial word. Next. Common forms of muscle dystrophy. They were facioscapulohumeral dystrophy oculopharyngeal dystrophy, limb girdle dystrophy and myotonic dystrophy. Then comes diseases due to diminished feedback inhibition by end product due to enzyme deficiency mainly it is porphyria. So here porphyria all will be coming under autosomal dominant except congenital erythropoietic porphyrin. Then the most easiest clue to remember the autosomal dominant disorders that is the conditions prefixed with hereditary or familial. So for example hereditary spirocytosis, familial adenomatosis polyposis which is a pre-malignant condition. Then comes familial hypercholesterolemia already we had seen in membrane receptor issue. So here comes the most important part of our video that is mnemonic. So if you want to remember it with the help of clues you can remember using that and now comes the direct helper that is our mnemonics. So here the mnemonic is autosomal dominant hands vulnerable family hereditarily. So let's see in detail. So here Autosomal is indicating autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. So here there will be problem in the polycystin gene 1 and 2 leading to this disorder. Then dominant. So here D is indicating the dystrophies, muscular dystrophies. So facioscapulohumeral, oculopharyngeal, limb girdle and dystrophia myotonia are myotonic dystrophy. Both are same. So then comes O in dominant. So O for osteogenesis imperfecta. Here there is problem with the type 1 collagen and mainly alpha 1 and alpha 2 chains. Then comes M in dominant that is Marfan syndrome. Problem with fibrillin gene. Then comes I that is intermittent 
porphyria cn that is neurofibromatosis 1 and 2 where there is problem with chromosome 17 and 22 then comes a chondroplasia where the problem is in the fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 then comes t that is tuberous sclerosis which is none other than a neurocutaneous issue then comes Hunt. Hunt is indicating the Huntington's disease or chorea. Here there will be CAG repeat expansion. Then comes vulnerable. V is indicating Von Willebrand disease. Then family. Family is indicating familial hypercholesterolemia and familial adenomatosis polyposis. So last it is hereditarily. So hereditary in case of hereditary spirocytosis and hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. And another two disorders which were related to H that is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and hypokalemic periodic paralysis. So all these disorders comes under autosomal dominant condition. So here comes a mnemonic for revision that is autosomal dominant Hence, vulnerable family hereditarily. So, this mnemonic will be very useful because most of the questions asking regarding whether uh, the inheritance is of autosomal dominant or recessive, those are direct questions. So, try not to miss even a single mark in these type of things. So, thank you so much and happy learning with us.